y'all so uh last week um brianna wrote me and and uh basically said i got a couple of songs that might be a blessing to israel and um she said so i'm gonna send you a couple of them and i and um you know what we get we get those often uh but this time around uh when brianna <laughs> when i heard I, uh, I I heard the first track she sent me. I immediately went to the whole album. I said, oh, she got, who is this? In Zion with this kind of musical genius and with this kind of beautiful voice. I said, oh, yes, for sure. This is going to be an encouragement and encouraging to the house of Israel. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Her name is um, Brianna Lynette 
We have never actually seen each other face to face, but obviously through these airways and through social media, through this uh, channel, um, obviously Abaya allowed us to uh, meet and I let her know that she has a, a fantastic gift and I want to uh, encourage our artists. Let me tell y'all something. I'll tell you what we need today. I appreciate all the work that y'all putting in. Toda Rabah. But do you know what we really need in Zion? We need music that has the word of Yah in it. That's what we need. I'm going to be talking to Brianna in the future, as well as Anna Jack and Jazz and others that are working on this, uh, Queen and others that we play on this programs and uh, um, uh, some of the, the Aki who are putting out work. And um, let me tell you what we need in these last days. We need song that if you learn the song, you're going to learn some script. I'm talking about actual verse. You're going to learn verses. You're going to learn the word of Abaya. And so when you run around singing, writing, singing, chilling out, the word is being put into your and, and, and look, we got 150 songs. So look at all the songs that can be written out of there. And then when you start talking about the words in the Torah and the songs and the psalms that are actually in the prophets like Jeremiah and Isaiah, and we could pull out those verses and we can put them to music like this and others. Zion, you know, we have something going, right? Uh, what I need everybody to do is if you can hear me all right, and you believe in what I'm saying, um, put a seven, because obviously we want to make sure we all in the room, 220 of y'all in the room in less than 10 minutes. And it looks like to me, somebody want to say, or saying, what is that y'all talking about? I'm glad you asked. Here it is. Uh, Brianna Lynette, for my good. One more time. This comes straight out of Romans chapter 8. Uh, uh, all things work together for good. Us in the Bible. Quite the same, your money throwing them off my game. Taking the time to realize that I fell and I may have lost my way. I, 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 I don't know what the problem is. I've seen you do it time and time and time again. Why can't I remember the things you said? Shalom! You see how so I'm the sky is now don't make it all right. I know I can't deny it. They mad cause you supply. You truth, yeah, use my life. And the devil use a lie. And I can't believe you tried it. Oh, you told me that it's working out for my good. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You told me that it's working out for my good. You told me that it's working out for my good. You told me that it's working out for my good. You told me that it's working out for my good. You told me that it's working out for my good. You told me that it's working out for my good. You got the key to my heart. I surrender, holding up my cross, won't forget who you sent me. My big brother, yeah. we're making big moves, they confuse, not good at it. If they didn't call it kind of fit, if it ain't big money, but it's dollar bills. Oh, oh, oh. you say I so I'm the flyest, no, no, make it all right. I know I can't deny it, they mad cause you supply. You truth, yeah, use my life, and the devil use a lie. And I can't believe you tried it. Oh, you told me that it's working out for my good. Yes! You told me that it's working out for my good. You told me that it's working out for my good. Mm -hmm. You told me that we know. We know. For we know. For we know. 
Hallelujah. 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 Shalom, Zion, to the 12 tribes of Israel that's been scattered worldwide. That's one of our new artists. If you're just now coming in the room at 268 folk, you say, man, I'm, yes, we played it back to back. Because it's a good day of worship, and that's a good word for us to hear that it's working out. Because you told me it's working out for our what? Good. That's right, Zion. This whole thing, when, when it's all said and done, it's all working out for our good. And so I want to say once again to our rabbi for uh, Brianna putting in that kind of work uh, as one of our psalms. Psalmstress, I guess that's how you would say it in these last days. And once again, I'm going to ask all these artists, go in that Bible, find lyrics, words, verses, whether they're popular or obscure, put them to music, just like uh, Jazz did the Shema and the, and the Master's Prayer. And... Uh, you know, like, um, you know, I've, I've been trying to encourage like Anna Jack and, and others, like, you know, they did Isaiah, open up the gates. And, and those are actual scriptures. So if you learn the, the, the words, the, the songs, you're going to be also learning script. And let me tell you, it's a lot of, it's a lot of, songs. <laughs> it's a lot of potential songs in here. And uh, that's what I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, working with her. She's very humble and, um, from what I have uh, uh, heard and, and spoke with her, her spirit is to help um, wake up Jacob and then give them encouragement. So Toda Rabbah um, for you. And we give Abaya praise, honor, and glory that we get a chance to be blessed like that on today. Um, I also want to say to all of you that made it through the Gregorian calendar of 2020, Oh, yeah, everything is going to be all right for us. For based on the holy manuscript after the 400-year prophecy of our captivity is over, we will see Yah, this is what it says, we will see Yah judging those nations. And, of course, that's what we are beginning to see right now, the hand of Yah's judgment on the nations. And you know, on every social media platform, whether it was just regular network television or whether it was internet or whatever, everybody was doing reviews on how terrible 2020 was. It marked the end of our 400 year captivity and the beginning of Yah's judgment on the nations that held us captive. As I said before, things will be unraveled and revealed to us. The books will be open to us because we know the who, what, where, when, how, and why of scripture. We know who the people are. And once you can see the right people in the text, from that point forward, Yah will open up the verses of the Bible and those previously hidden things that he told the prophets to seal up. You and I will be able to clearly see them as Yah is in a, in a way unseals and opens the books for us. And of course, this is the greatest one. We're living literally in the time 
where he said he would judge the nations that enslaved us and told our rabbi, uh, our ancestors could have never seen the internet. <laughs> they could have never seen the ability for me to be way out here in California speaking to Hebrew Israelites just now waking up all over the world. They would, it, it, they, it, so it had to be saved until when? The last days. When it, when it would be revealed to us who we are and whose we are and what time it is. Now we know what time it is in scripture. Now we can start properly applying the prophetic um, information, the prophetic word to where we are because we know what time it is. And I give out by y'all praise, honor, and glory for that. And those of you that are in this room, uh, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom. And uh, for those of you who are first time in the room, welcome. We welcome you. Whether you are Yehudin or whether you are Gentile, you're welcome in the room. There will be things said that will challenge you if this is your first time. You may not have ever heard a moray preach from the word of Yah in such a way. Well, all I'm saying is open your Bible, take a pencil and a pen and have your computer and your iPhone or iPad ready to do the research to see whether or not these things be true, Zion. For his people are coming out of darkness and entering into his marvelous light. And for all of you, the faithful ones of Abaya, told our Rabbah. Once again, one of the things we do on the Shabbat, many of us like to give Abaya praise and honor, and many of us like to donate and to give and to support the work of the art. And I want to tell you all this, told our Rabbah. And some of you all that catch the rebroadcast, I want to say also to you, told our Rabbah. Because I pray that our support of the household of the hopeful, that our support, the ark support of Israel is being received by Israel. And in return, Israel said, you know what? I want to continue to support the ark. Because they the ark and the ministry, it helps me learn the scripture and understand the Bible and who we are and whose we are. You see that this is a ministry worth supporting. And some of you all are so faithful that it doesn't matter what we've been going through with all this 2020. You stayed faithful all year. And I want to say from the bottom of my heart, told our Rabbah. And for all of you who are going to be and, and want to support, I want to say from the bottom of my heart, told our Rabbah, which simply means thank you, expanded, multiplied, because we cannot continue to do this on this level without you. I have a, a this is this is not a, a, a new song, but it is a song that I've been trying to get a hold of for a while and Yaron finally sent it to me. Told our Rabbah, Yaron. <laughs> While we prepare our hearts to give to support and also to pray for this work, I want to play this song. I think it's one of these. Uh, it's from the uh, Sounds of Sinai called the Decalogue, talking about the Ten Commandments. This is what I'm talking about, Zion. You learn this song, you're going to learn your Ten Commandments. Let's get it. Like, hi, come on now. There we go. Yah commanded us to do all these statutes. So during this time, if you'll be kind, you can give your tithes and your offering and make a donation toward this work. We definitely appreciate whatever you do, Zion. And our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments before Yah, our Elohim, as he has commanded us. Praise you, Father Yah. 
know the Ten Commandments. That's what I'm talking about. And it's jamming. Told our rabbi to the sounds of Sinai putting in work for the kingdom, looking forward to some more uh, work and albums being put up. If y'all, I mean, put out. If you all enjoyed that, would you please put another seven in the chat? Please place another seven. And you want to go of course, to uh, the uh, Sounds of Sinai, they have an album called Monotheism. And then, um, of course, Brianna, she has hers. Her album is called Note to Self. And um, I believe there's going to be much more Hebrew Israelite music coming forth, being inspired by Abaya. Because the closer we get to home, the more inspired his children, the bloodline blood bought descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the more they are going to be magnified and their gifts are going to be edified. You'll see, Zion. We're about to see some things we've never seen and hear some things 
we've never heard. We're going to feel some things we never felt. And some of us are going to start knowing some things we never knew. Why? Because the 400-year captivity is over. And Abba Yah is waving his hand a second time. So once again, one love told our Rabbah to all you, my father's children. And uh, this is Moray Yoshiyahu, Dawid of the Ark, once again excited about an opportunity to speak with Zion. I asked Abba Yah for a word because you know I'm in series. And I was going to try to, to just pick up on the series, but um, I was sort of moved in a way to, to give Zion a word of encouragement as we leave the Gregorian 2020 into the Gregorian 2021. And I know that's not ours. I said that's Gregorian calendar. But as we move into this, I thought that as a moray, I would give Zion a word of encouragement. I thought I would share with Zion something that will help keep your hand to the plow and not look back. I asked Abaya to, to help me with a word that would help Zion keep on keeping on. For in the midst of struggles, trials, persecution, exhaustion, he's calling us in these last days to continue to be the light of the world and the salt of the earth. And Abaya reminded me of a passage that I read and was inspired by and this particular passage uh, inspired me over 10 years ago. Yes. And, I, and, and to tell you what, Zion, the same feeling I got when I read it the first time, it began to move in me again. But this time, I, I guess after 10 years being in the awaken, awakening, it it. It, it was like, whoa, he's speaking to me. And if he's speaking to me, he's also speaking to you. And if this gives me encouragement, I pray it also gives you encouragement. We're going to be in Colossians. Yes, that's, in the, that's what they call the New Testament. The Ark don't believe in Old and New Testament. We believe in one book. We believe that we have a compilation of individual books that make up one continuous book, one continuous story. And it's the story of how Abaya is going to redeem his people, Israel. All right, so we're going to be in Colossians. And um, of course, one of the best ways for us to enter in to this quote unquote message. Um, I believe we ought to pray and we're going to use the master's prayer in Hebrew to help focus our attention on the text so that Abaya can speak to us and as his people, we can hear what the Ruach is saying to the assembly. This is Matthew chapter 6, verse 9, taken straight out the Holy Bible, but read and sang in Hebrew, Zion, our original language. Over 
in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debt as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Colossians chapter four, verse 17. Colossians. Chapter 4, verse 17. And when you all have found that, put a 17 in the chat. Let the whole world know we're looking at it together. Let everybody that, that, that's peeking in on what's being taught, let them know that we're not ashamed to let, let everybody know we're in Colossians today. Chapter 4, verse 17, and the way them 17s is rolling. It means that Moray is not the only one looking at this text. Somebody else has looked at it and said, yeah, I'm right here with you. I can see Colossians. I know we're in what they call the New Testament. Oh, yeah, the Hebrew Israelites are teaching from Colossians. Because we believe the whole book. Chapter 4, verse 17. And say to Archippus, take heed to the ministry which thou hast received in Yahuwah that thou fulfill it. And say to Archippus, Take heed to the ministry which thou hast received in Yah. That thou, that thou is you, might 
fulfill it. A word to Archippus. That's the name of this sermon on this Shabbat. A word to Archippus. Colossae, uh, and the Colossians are Israelites. He's Paul is writing to a Israelite community that's in Greece. an Israelite community that is being influenced by the secular powers that be. Colossae is one of those places where the so-called uppity up and the muckety mucks all have put their heads together and come up with what the Bible calls vain philosophy and doctrines of men. That place has become what we would call today a place of intellectuals, a place of scientists, archaeologists, historians, philosophers who all seem to have something to say about life and death. They all seem to have some kind of way or method that they believe is going to get them some kind of way to the other side. It's man-made religion. So, Yah has used my cousin and many of your cousin. His name is Paul, but his Hebrew name is Shaul. He's using this, and I'm going to say it, oh yes, what y'all will call black. Hebrew Israelite from the tribe of Benjamin to go up to white Greece, to Colossia, to Colossae, to that region, and do what? Encourage them. Give them word. Give them, tell them the truth. Because they are being bombarded with what? They are being bombarded with secular philosophy and thought. It's all about human secularism. So when you go up there trying to preach the gospel, they can't hear you. You're down there trying to Tell these uh, Hebrews up there to be strong and hold on to Torah and believe in Hamashiach who has shed his blood for the remission of sin. And, that, and while you're talking to them, in their mind, they got to deal with all of the human philosophy and, and Gnosticism and Stoicism and a bunch of other stuff that have been put in their mind. So... This letter is written to this particular group of what they call Gnostics, which is another word for the people who think they know everything. So what Paul is saying in the whole book is don't get sidetracked by none of that. Don't you get sidetracked from it and don't let people who don't understand Torah sidetrack you.
So you all know as a more and those of you who've been with me for a while know I do not like opening up a book to the last chapter. And I for sure don't like going to the last verse of, a, of the last chapter, <laughs> last couple of verses. But for today, this word of encouragement, I, I don't really need the whole book. I just want to show you this one line right here. Because after Paul writes this whole letter to Colossians, to the saints of Colossae, and it was all obviously a mixed congregation, he points out a fellow and he named Archippus. It's like right before he finished the whole letter, he, he says, oh, and make sure you get a word to Archippus. Paul, man, it might be hundreds of people in this Colossians. That's my point. I need to talk to Archippus. I need him to get this word. And it's very interesting that Archippus is getting a mention in the Holy Manuscript. And in Colossians chapter 4, verse 17, after all that preaching Paul does, he said, oh, and by the way, make sure you tell Archippus something from me. So what, what do I, what do I tell him? Tell Archippus, I said, take heed to the ministry which thou has received from Yahuwah. If y'all rolling with the moray and you can see that Archippus is being pointed out and, and, and he is being given a word directly from Paul. If you could clearly see that, uh, put a 21 in the chat, please. I'm going to wait for you. Put a 21 in the chat. I want you to see something right off the bat. He said, say to Archippus. The way the text reads is almost as though he said, oh, and don't forget I need this word to go straight to Archippus and I need it to go to Archippus right now. Well, what am I supposed to tell him when I see him? Tell him that I said, take heed to the ministry that you have been given in Yahuwah to fulfill it. What a word. What a word. Can you imagine being in the assembly of maybe a few hundred people and, and uh, the Apostle Paul is in prison and he's writing a letter. And he writes this letter to show you who Hamashiach is and how the plan of Yah has always been the same. To show you that Yah is faithful in that, in that in the midst of human philosophy and thought, no heathen can ever come up with a better philosophy of life than Yahuwah himself, who is the way, the truth, and the life. He's encouraging them concerning several things in this book. Can you imagine being in the congregation, hearing this message, and in the letter, I'm talking about in the letter, all of a sudden, he called your name out. In front of everybody. <laughs> so here you are in the congregation. We got a letter. We got a letter from Shaul. Y'all come on in, let's read it. And everybody come in the room and we all sit down and you start in verse one and y'all, uh, it's not a verse, it's a letter. So you start the first uh, line and you read the whole thing. And then right at the end it says, oh yeah, and tell George, 
Oh, yes. And quickly say to Bonnie and to Tiffany. Oh, yeah. Oh, I know. Uh, Rosie may be in, in the room. Tell her or Dwayne or whoever else. Peter. In the room. Can you imagine your name getting called out in one of his letters that's supposed to be distributed to the churches? That's the case with Archippus. And what is he telling Archippus in front of everybody? It's like, you know, if I was reading the letter and said, oh, and tell Yosh. Tell Yosh Yahoo that I said, I'm like, whoa. You got something to say to me? Yes, take heed to the ministry. which thou hast received of Yahuwah, that thou what? Fulfill it. Why would you tell Archippus to take heed to the ministry? It's obvious that at this particular point, Either somebody told Paul or the Ruach told Paul that Archippus was struggling. Woo! Y'all need to put that down right now. Write that down. The message had to come to Paul and say, you know what? Archippus is struggling in the ministry. The word ministry, don't let that throw you off. Zion, it just means work. So the idea is that Archippus is struggling in the work. So Paul writes this long letter. Then when he gets to the end, he said, oh, and by the way, say to Archippus that I said, tell him that he has to take heed to the ministry which he received from Yah. If y'all can clearly see that, put a 25 in the chat. I want y'all to see this. As we go together, put a 25 so that you can understand something plain as day. He said, Archippus, listen, I need you to understand something. Yah gave you a ministry. And this ain't the time for you to be talking about you done. Yes, we're helping Zion on the Shabbat. Of course. Well, who is Archippus? The only other information we have on Archippus is in the book of Philemon, or what they say, Philemon. All right? So real quick, I just want to flip over to Philemon. Take my time. Flip over to Philemon. Not Philippians. Philemon. We're going to flip over to Philemon. And I'm going to read it. I want everybody to get it. Philemon. Now, ain't no reason for me to say chapter one ain't but one chapter, right? <laughs> Y'all know that, right? So Philemon, verse one and two. Paul. A prisoner of what? Paul, a prisoner of Yahushua Hamashiach. Wait a minute. I thought you were a prisoner of Rome. Pause it now. Yeah, I'm shackled in, but reality is I'm really a prisoner of Yahushua Hamashiach. Notice that he didn't talk about his lofty degrees. Notice he didn't talk about his grand wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. No. 
He said, I'm a prisoner of Hamashiach and Timothy, our brother, unto Philemon, our dearly beloved and fellow laborer. And to our beloved Aphia and Archippus. Wow. If you Hebrews, for the first time in your life, have either, number one, seen Archippus in the Bible because Moray just showed him to you, and number two, if this is the first time you ever seen that he's in here two times, he's in here twice, would you do me a favor and uh, won't you put a 47 in the chat? Because today you've already learned something. Today, you've already been given information that you didn't have before. You didn't know who Archippus was when you when you turned on this video. Matter of fact, some of y'all clicked the video on because you said, who is Archippus? <laughs> He's in the Bible. And look, look how you're learning on the Shabbat. That's what this is all about. This is what I mean when I say that we at the Ark are committed to supporting you. That's why when we say, would you please help support us? It's because we're supporting each other. You don't leave one of the ARC uh, videos. Hopefully you don't leave without learning something or seeing something that you either didn't know or have never seen. So part of my job is to show you Archippus is listed in the Bible here. I wanted you to see that. It's important. Why? Because the house of Philemon is where Archippus is from. I'm not going to go into how come you should know the whole Bible. You should just know the whole Bible. You have to learn the whole Bible. But you should really know what's going on here. But watch this. To our beloved um, Aphia and Archippus, our fellow soldier. So now we know that Archippus is a fellow soldier. Can I say it like this? Archippus is on the battlefield for Yahuwah. <laughs> He's a fellow soldier. <laughs> when I was young, we used to sing a song, I'm on the battlefield for Yahuwah. And then it would say, and I promise him that I would serve him, how long? Till I die. So in this passage, we see Archippus is a soldier in the army of Yah. We see it, it's right there. He's a fellow soldier. And for Paul, who is Saul, to give him the title fellow soldier, this fella right here, this, this, this Hebrew right here, this Aki right here must have been somebody. If he said, man, this is a fellow soldier, that means that Paul was basically saying, this is one of them fellows that I'll take with me on the battlefield. And Zion, I'm going to be honest, after all this time of me teaching and preaching, it's very, very few Hebrew Israelites that I know personally I'm willing to take with me on the battlefield. And we got a different kind of... Uh, 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 person today is, is kind of strange. They sometimey, iffy. They they up today, down tomorrow. You know what I mean? They they all about y'all one day and then they back to doing drugs and, and running women and talking crazy the next day. I can't deal with it. That's not my kind of fellow soldier. My fellow soldiers are one who have done their best, have are doing their best to put that old sinful life behind them and walk according to the laws, statutes, and commandments. That's a fellow soldier. A fellow soldier is one that if you're out there fighting against the enemy, you're supposed to be able to know that that person got your back. But if that, if you if you out there with one of these, <laughs> boy, we got Hebrews today. Oh, my goodness gracious, they scared of cats. Can't go with me up. 
I ain't mad at you, but that cat phobia thing, man, I can't, man. That meow, you take off running like a scat. No, man, you can't hang with the more I ain't mad at you. I, I still love you, and I will still teach, but that, that little cat scare you, meow. Oh, I got to get off the battlefield. <laughs> Woo! No. You, you're not a fellow soldier. I can't hang out with nobody that's scared of the dark. Because there's sometimes we're going to have to go out and fight in the dark. And if you're talking about, hey, it's getting dark. Eh? <laughs> Maury, Maury. Yeah, <laughs> it's getting dark. Uh, come again, Hebrew. <laughs> I didn't tell you this before we came out here on the battlefield, but <laughs> I'm kind of scared of the dark. <laughs> Woo! Stay away from me. Stay. I can't be with you. Mm -mm. Not on the battlefield. We might play some dominoes together. You know what I'm saying? Some spade, bid whiz or something. But we can't be on the battlefield together and you're talking about I'm scared of the dark. That's not going to work. Or you be on the battlefield and the enemy raise his voice. Uh, who y'all think you are? And then all of a sudden, you're supposed to be a soldier. Let's go. Let's go. Home. Let's go. Home. Let's go where? I don't know. Let's go home. Why are we going home? Because I don't like people when they raise their voice. It ain't no telling. <laughs> Whoa. I can't do that. I I'm just raised different. That kind of person, you scared of cats. You scared of the dark. And you scared when somebody raised their voice. You can't be a fellow soldier. <laughs> if y'all got that, put a 50 in the chat. I'm just trying to make a point because my point is serious. This, I made a, I tried to make it real, but my point is real. If you're not in this thing knowing that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, rulers of darkness, spiritual wickedness, in high places, then this ain't the place for you. We're not out here on no patty cake field. We're out here on the battlefield. And this particular octopus, this is the only, this is the only real description we get of him, which is enough for my message. <laughs> this is enough for, for, for me. The only description we get is he's a fellow soldier. So Paul then is writing this letter to Colossian, to Colossae, to the, to the Israelites and Gentiles who are part of that congregation. And he says, oh yeah, and don't forget, say to Archippus that I said, take heed, man. To your ministry. You need to hold on to that which Yah has given you for the body of Hamashiach. And you don't quit until you have fulfilled what he called you to do. Well, if I'm talking to somebody in Zion and you're not ashamed to put a hallelujah 100 in the room and say, yes, more Yoshi Yahoo. That we've been Israel. I believe I'm an octopus on today. <laughs> Would you put a 100 in the chat? If you if, if you can hear the Ruach talking to you right now, then you can put your name where Archippus' name is. You can put your name there. You can say, maybe today. Is a day that I take heed to the work that Yahuwah gave me for the body so that I can fulfill it. Maybe this is talking to me. Maybe I'm the one that's supposed to hear uh, that I'm supposed to, watch this. Not be a punk, a sissy, a coward. Not supposed to be giving up and fainting and now nah, running from scats and running from cats in the dark 
and somebody raised their voice or tech something, I quit. Somebody write you a bad letter, forget it. Somebody put up a video talking about you behind your back. I, I just can't do this no more. Somebody spread a lie on you. You know what? I'm through with the Israelites. I'm through with Israel altogether. I'm just going to be. <laughs> Boss on one or two things. Either you, you're starting to get a little discouraged as a soldier or you was never a soldier in the first place. So we have to be encouraged. Uh, and Paul points out him particularly, said, Archippus. And the only thing we know about him, based on the text, is he's a fellow soldier. So what is Paul saying to one of his fellow soldiers? I remember, I remember when uh, uh, I was studying this idea of like a fellow or a fellow, like when, in the word like fellowship, right? And one of these old preachers told me something a long time ago. I never forget it. He said it's it's the it's like fellows all in the same ship. Now he was an old country preacher, right? He didn't go to no big fancy school, no degrees, but this was his way of making a making a definition of fellowship. He was like it's all the same, all the fellows in the same ship, basically in the same shape. And I said, okay, that's interesting. And he said, no, let me tell you why. I said, why? He said, because if we all in the same ship and one of the fellows in the ship decide to shoot a hole in the bottom of the boat, <laughs> he said, we all go with that. That's the idea. I said, wow. I will never forget that long as I live. So the picture is this. Paul must have uh, considered Archippus a fellow in the same ship. I hope you understand that point. I'm just trying to show you. Like, hey man, you need to realize the importance of your position in the body of Hamashiach. You need to realize the importance of your job. You need to know how crucial your work is. And even though I'm writing this letter to all the congregation, I need to point you out because you have been given something special. And unfortunately, you're starting to let that special thing that Yah gave you slip. You're not praying like you used to pray. It's slipping. You're not studying like you know you're supposed to study. You're slipping. You're not loving your neighbor as yourself, the way you're supposed to love your neighbor as yourself, you're slipping. You're not taking heed to the ministry. And even though we fellow soldiers, I got a word for you. Your focus is getting off. You need to, you need to fix that. More how you know that's what that means. All right, let's go back to Colossians. Chapter four. He says, take heed. Now, I don't, like I said, I only use Greek to get to Hebrew. So the Greek word here, uh, blepo, which really means, or blepo, which means to look intense or to have a stare or a gaze. It's the idea uh, blepo means if there's something that's big and out of focus, 
that you look at it long enough until it becomes very vivid and in focus. So that's the word that's being used there in the Greek, which is not a bad word for this particular translation. Sometimes they get real close. So the idea is to look intently at something. So the picture is obviously dealing with eyes, focus. He's saying, man, to this soldier, he like soldier, fellow soldier, you're getting, your focus is getting off. So that's, that's the Greek word. And it is accurate concerning the Hebrew word behind it, because our Hebrew word behind that is what? Shema. And of course, Shema means to do what? Keep watch. You are not keeping watch. You're taking things for granted and you're seeing things blurry. You're not focusing in. You are not keeping your eye on the prize. You're not understanding, man, we are still in a war. We're still in a battle and you a fellow soldier. And the rumor is that you about to quit. And this is what you don't know, Archippus, because I'm talking to Archippus all over the world right now. This is what you forgot. You forgot that the thing, the work, the ministry that was given to you, what you forgot was it didn't come from you. It came from Yah. If y'all could clearly see that, put a 500 in this. Ooh, please, on the Shabbat, put a 500 before I start hollering and dancing and spinning and, and doing. What? Woo. Woo! Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. He had to remind him, man, look, what you got didn't come from you. What's wrong with you? Talking about what you going to do and when you going to do it and how you going to do it and what kind of intensity and blah, blah, blah. He's like, hey, tell Archippus that I said, take heed to the work which he received from Yah. That's my second point. Which he received from Yah. First of all, you've been given a job and you're letting it get blurry. You're not focusing on it. Other things are starting to take your focus, man. Uh, uh, a key, a coat, ima, uh, you're letting things get in your life that's pulling you off. And, and, and Moray is trying to bring a message today to say, that can't be no more. Uh-uh. No, 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 no. Not now. Not when this thing is almost over. Not when the prophecy is, is complete and the judgment on the nations have already started. This is not the time to be losing focus. This is not the time to be shifting your vision and shifting your eyes. No, Yah has called you to a particular ministerial. Now, when I say that, that word just means work. A particular work for the kingdom that has to be done. Because this work, Archippus, is bigger than you. Yeah, but my little, my little bit, you don't understand what your little bit is. Your little bit may be the little bit that's helping the lot of bit. <laughs> Did I just say lot of bit? <laughs> your little bit can be the little bit that's helping the lot of bit accomplish the task. And you talking about you tired. You talking about, man, I'm not doing this no more. He said, well, I got news for you. It wasn't yours. Y'all gave it to you, but it wasn't for you. It's for the assembly. Number three, the first thing he said, take heed. He said, because you didn't get it from you, you got it from Yah. That means you need to focus back on what Yah has called you to do because it's not from you, it's from Yah. Then number three, he said, so that you can fulfill it. So what? 
You're not done. Um, if y'all could understand <laughs> that Paul is trying to tell Archippus, man, you ain't done. Put a 1,000 in this chat. If you understand that, that's what he's saying. Look, man, you, you can't be talking about you quit. You can't be talking about <laughs> you can't be losing focus now, bro. You're not done. It's not over. What you've been called to do has not been fulfilled. In the book of the Revelation, we are told to be thou faithful. Watch this. Unto death, not simply until death, but notice it says unto death. In other words, we're not just faithful until we die. We are also faithful even if our faithfulness causes our death. Did you hear them already? I'm going to say that one more time because it's going out worldwide. He's not telling us to just be faithful like until we die, like get old and die. <laughs> There's a greater emphasis. He's saying we're supposed to be faithful to Hamashiach and to the cause, even if our faithfulness to him, listen to me, causes our death unto death. And Zion, I realized we got a long ways to go before, because, because many of us, you quit when the cat meow, you quit if it get dark, you quit if somebody say something behind your back, you will to throw in the towel if everybody don't understand what you're saying, you, you, uh, uh, it don't take anything, uh, lose a job, now you mad, uh, friends ain't talking to you, ah, yeah. and, and, and let me tell you something. You're trying to figure out about this whole COVID and earthquakes. And, and let me tell you, look, look, none of that has anything to do with your call. I got to be faithful to him if the whole world catch on fire. I need, I need the Hebrew boys to speak up right now. Oh, yes, Murray, Yoshi, Yahoo, Dawid. We got called in on the carpet. Say, why? What did y'all do? Well, it wasn't so much what we did as what we wouldn't do. Well, what was it you wouldn't do? We drew a line. Hananiah, Azariah, Michelle. We drew a line. Y'all know him as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But that's the Babylonian name. So, Tell me what happened. Nebuchadnezzar the king put up a put up a, a statue, man, 90 feet tall, and told everybody it was gold. He told everybody when you hear the sound of the music, and he got music from all over the world, he said, You're gonna have to bow down and worship. He said, We already knew we made a commitment to Yahweh. We said, We're not doing that. So they brought him in to, before the king and said, Is it true? Well, we looked at each other like, yeah, it's true. What's wrong with you? <laughs> we ain't mad at you, king, but you over, you went too far. Notice what they didn't do. They didn't hit each other like, man, let's get out of here, man. Let's get out of here. See, that's not, uh, if we get called into the carpet, we need, I need somebody going to stand with me. Okay, live forever. But we ain't even got to discuss this. <laughs> if y'all read the Daniel, he, he literally says, we're not careful in answering you in this matter. What does that mean? Say, so, man, we ain't even thinking about this. This is not something that that, that we had to sit there and go, now how are we gonna say? Man, we, got, we knew when you called us in here that we was gonna tell you we wasn't gonna bow. And if it means that we got to die, so be it. If we die, we die. And he said, because one thing we know, Yah can deliver us. But if he don't, we still not bowing. So do what you got to do. They heated the, the fire in the furnace seven times hotter. So now you got one more chance to bow down knees to Babylonian gods. They was like, oh, no, you crazy. Throw us on in. 
This is this our last day on the planet. That's all right. We got the resurrection to look forward to. You heathens don't. Boy, they, they went headlong into the fiery furnace and the book says that Yah cut them loose in the fire. And they went in bound, but when they looked in the fire, they were walking around free. And then a fourth one was in the fire with them. The king said, didn't we throw in three? We threw in three Hebrews. He said, but it looked like I see four. And that fourth one looked like the very son of Elohim. That is the picture of faithful unto death. Not just until. But they didn't say, man, my faithfulness done got me in trouble with the law. My faithfulness done got me in trouble with the king. My faithfulness done got me in the... Look, it, listen, listen. You should have known that when you signed up. He said, man, your job ain't over. And once again, if you guys got that point that it's not over, put a 1,000, put a 1,000 in the chat because I got to move on to my next point. But put that 1,000 because I want you to understand that that word behind that thou shall fulfill it is our Hebrew word completion. This is what he said. He said, man, your job ain't complete. Tell Archippus, I said, to refocus on his job that Yah gave him because the job is not complete. He's not completed it. Well, can you imagine how embarrassed Archippus must have been in front of the whole congregation like, did, is he talking to me? <laughs> did he just point me out? I'm a fellow soldier. Why would he tell the whole world that I'm losing focus? Why would he write a letter? This is what we would say. Man, why are you going to put me on blast in front of the whole congregation? <laughs> if you all could clearly see that Paul had no problem putting Archippus on blast in front of the whole congregation, I need y'all to put a 10,000 in the chat. I want you to see he would put on blast in front of everybody. Because remember, he's a fellow soldier. Why would Paul put him on blast in front of the whole? I'm going to tell you why. Because Paul knew by putting Archippus on blast, it was not going to cause Archippus to have his feelings hurt. Because that's what we're dealing with today amongst many people who claim Yah has called them. But they wear their feelings on their sleeve. I don't appreciate the fact uh, you called my name. I can't say Jacob online. Are you talking to me? I can't say Israel online. Are you talking to me? I can't say Jeremiah. Are you talking to me? I can't say nothing, man. Y'all sensitive. Boy, what's wrong with you? <laughs> I got to go. <laughs> I got to get out your way. But I wanted you to see something. Uh, we too sensitive today. And that is no time for that in these last days. Archippus could handle it because deep down inside of Archippus, believe this, he knew he was slipping. So when he got put on blast in front of the whole church, it wasn't like he could turn around and tell Paul, you lying. He knew he, he knew it. He knew it. So he just took it like a man. I just got reprimanded by Paul in front of everybody. <laughs> he told everybody I was slipping. And, and, and this is what Moray is doing on this Shabbat. I'm telling the whole world that you slip. And before I even say it, those of you who this message is for, you know you slipping. <laughs> Ain't no reason you get mad at me. The real rock is talking. He knows who I'm talking to. You know you slipping. You know your study is not what it's supposed to be. Your commitment to him is not what it's supposed to be. You know you've been losing focus. 
Because it was whatever reason doesn't matter. You know that in this text, you occupus. And you're like, man, Morios Yahoo done put me on blast in front of everybody. <laughs> well, welcome to the team. <laughs> because I know that y'all know that there's no such thing as, as a message or a sermon that don't first hit the person who's preaching it or teaching it. I hope y'all know that by now. I'm going to let you think about that while I pour myself some water on the Shabbat. So what is Paul reminding Archippus of? Number one, this is a lifetime job. The work that Abba Yah has given us to do for the kingdom is a lifetime job. And he's expecting his soldiers to fight in the kingdom their whole life. He's expecting his workers to work their whole life. He's expecting his ministers to minister their whole life. He's expecting his servants to serve their whole life. He's expecting that all of us who he has gifted continue in our gifts our whole life. But here, obviously, Archippus Something done happened to Archippus where he's like, I can't handle these, these Negro Hebrew Israelites. <laughs> Paul, you don't understand what I'm dealing with. I'm not dealing with just the average Hebrew. I'm dealing with these uppity uppity Hebrews. I'm dealing with these Hebrews with degrees and these Hebrews that talk about they've been to seminary. And I'm dealing with these Hebrews, man, that believe in evolution. I'm dealing with these Hebrews saying the food don't matter. Uh, you eat what you want to eat. I'm dealing with man. I'm dealing with some messed up Hebrews, man. I, my, uh, Paul, you don't understand, man. I got family members still decorating their kids up like the devil once a year, talking about they followers of a messiah. Woo! Paul, you don't understand. Paul said, I do. You don't understand that this thing is for life. Uh, no, I think you need to testify right now. It'd be a good time for you to testify. He said, well, okay, I'll testify. More Abba Yah told me to build an ark for the saving of my house. And I was like, all right, I'll build it. He said, but then when he told me how big it was, I was like, whoa! <laughs> it's going to take a while. Yeah, about 100 years. And that whole time I needed to be preaching. Oh, man, we both. Oh, okay, I get it. I get it. The reason why you want me to build this thing like 300 feet long and two, two or three hundred feet high is because all these Hebrews, is. All, I mean, I'm sorry, all these, uh, all of your children, your sons and daughters are going to get on it. They're going to be converted, right? Oh, the righteous line, they're all going to be on the boat. Oh, okay, yeah, I make it big as he said. Well, not exactly. <laughs> so what's all this room for? Why am I building it so big? Oh, because I'm finna put some animals on there with you. <laughs> what about the people? Uh, the people don't have kangaroo sense. <laughs> See, if I tell the kangaroo to get on the boat, they're gonna hop on the boat. <laughs> The people don't got bird brain sense. If I tell a couple of birds to fly on the boat, guess what they go? If I tell them to get on the boat, they're going to fly up to the boat. 
Ah, they ain't got cheetah sense. If I tell a cheetah, get on the boat, them cheetahs going to run and get on the boat. But I can have you tell the people that I said get on the boat and them stiff neck, hard hearted, satanically infused. Some of your cousins and uncles, and they're not getting on. Now you don't think after fifty years he didn't he want he didn't want to quit? Sixty years he didn't want to quit. Seventy years he didn't want to quit. Come on now, at the end of his preaching, he said, "Yeah, seven days, and the storm is coming." Them Hebrews, them, he said, Hebrews, as our ancestors, they still didn't get on the boat. That's all I'm trying to get you to see. But did he stop? No. Did he quit? No. Because it was important he fulfilled the task that Yah gave him because fulfilling the task was for the saving of his house. He was trying to tell Archippus, you're not done, man. What you've been given by Yah is not being fulfilled. What are you doing, man? Shifting focus. What are you doing? Um, acting like, man, you could pick this up and put it down whenever you get ready. I, is there something going on, Archippus? Okay. There's If y'all got what I'm saying, uh... Put a 20,000 and we're going to keep it moving. Put a 20,000. Yes, Murray, I got that. I see it. Okay, good. Let's move to the next point. The servants of Abaya end up only two, one of two ways. Either you're going to, as a servant of Yah, be counted as a good servant so that Yah is going to say good, which that word is functional. Remember, never forget that. Our word for good is tov. It means functioning the way you were designed to function. Functional, he's going to say good and faithful servant. In Hebrew, he said you functional and steadfast. In other words, you stayed connected. You stayed functional and you stayed steadfast. To me, well done. Come on up a little higher. You have you have a few things, but now you're going to rule many. That's what he says. So the good and faithful servant, which is actually the functional and steadfast servant of Yah, is one of the ways you can end up. The only other way you can end up is a slothful and foolish, or what they would call in Hebrew, wicked servant. And our word wicked means dysfunctional. So instead of you being faithful, which means staying connected to Yah and to Torah, you disconnected from him. And instead of you being good or tov, which is functional, you are dysfunctional. So now he's trying to, he's presenting Archippus with this, that Archippus already knows, but he just needs to be reminded. You can only end up one or two ways. Either he's going to say you've been good and faithful, or he's going to say you've been slothful and wicked. There's only two ways. And those of us who have been slothful and wicked, boy, you better get it together and turn it around before our king come back. And that's what Paul was telling Archippus. He said, man, I can see you starting to slip, dude. And you don't want to move from a good, functional, and faithful, dedicated servant to actually being named a what? Slothful and dysfunctional servant. Because that's where you headed, man. Ain't but one or two ways. Zion, do y'all hear me? Ain't but one or two ways for you either. Let's continue. So the question is, what caused Archippus 
to start neglecting his Yah given task. What started him to what we would call maybe losing? I'm talking, I'm not talking about the Christian idea of faith, but I'm talking about Hebraic faith. What made him start loosening his grip on Torah? One of the preachers said, the landscape of leadership is littered with ministers, preachers, teachers, workers that begun a good work, but for some reason quit before the task was completed. Why? I'm going to tell you why most of the time it's always the same. Some difficulty in life that did it. You thought for some reason that when you started walking with Yah, everything was supposed to be roses and nice and easy. And then you started really walking with him and discover something. This thing is difficult. It's hard trying to learn Hebrew. <laughs> After I've been speaking broken English my whole life. So you just quit. I didn't know I was supposed to read the whole Bible over and over and over again. So you just quit. Oh, I didn't know that I was supposed to pay tithes and offerings. I thought when I became a Hebrew, I could keep all of my money to myself, pay myself to tithe. <laughs> so you quit? I didn't know I was going to have to go the second mile, turn the other cheek. and all. So you quit? Man, I, 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 I had no idea that they weren't going to invite me to the family reunion. <laughs> so you just quit? Maury, I'm not used to people talking about me behind my back. So you quit. Man, I felt so lonely. Boy, you just don't understand, man. When I started keeping the law, I just commandments, boy. So what you're telling me is, that's what made you quit. Maury, I got to I gotta make a statement. Go ahead. I, I was writing songs for the kingdom and then somebody said they didn't like my song. So I just said, forget it. <laughs> I got to go. <laughs> really? Really? That's what made you quit? Maybe your song convicted somebody they didn't like it. <laughs> Maybe you should tighten your song up a little bit. Maybe it's a little lagging. I mean, on why are you quitting? I'm already, I had a ministry. You had a ministry. Yeah, you know, I was having some Hebrews meet. We were meeting on a regular basis, but then, you know, they didn't want to support. And uh, man, I was up, so I just said, forget it. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> One of two things. Either y'all didn't give it to you in the first place, you just picked up something that you didn't supposed to pick up because everybody don't have to be, is not called to be a leader of a congregation. Or number two, you quit. You don't have to deal with that between you and y'all. But if you are octopus, which means that you know that you are really a soldier, you know what you're supposed to be doing, but you're letting it slip for whatever reason. And that's why the Maury is here because I understand. You're all not looking at a person who have not been absolutely broke. You're not looking at that person. You're not looking at a person that didn't lose everything, including buildings and lands that's worth millions and millions of dollars. So don't come talking to me about what you had to give up because none of y'all had land overlooking the Pacific Ocean. None of y'all had acreage in downtown in the city that I, because of who you are, who you are, don't have it. None of y'all lost millions of dollars in the income. Don't, don't and ended up so broke you flipping couch furniture looking for change. So let's stop that. Let's stop that. <laughs> they wasn't supporting. Okay, well, and I would have never been here at this point speaking to Israel today with. 709 people in the room. If I would have let poverty stop me from talking and telling the truth about Israel and being on the battlefield. If I would have allowed people talking about me behind my back to take me off the battlefield. If I would have allowed some type of uh, disappointment or heart. What is that all about? They didn't call me. 
Not one of y'all watching me had all the preachers in your in your town, and in, in my case, in the town and in the valley, come together and write a letter saying <laughs> that we, as a group of ministers and preachers, we formally withdraw the right hand of fellowship. <laughs> And right now, boy, they suffering havoc. And Abaya is taking this ministry and this work all over the world. And I still got the letter somewhere. Why did he give it up? Why was he slipping? Was it because he failed morally? Could be. You know, he's Hebrew. He's a soldier, right? Some sister probably... Had him slipping. It ain't odd. Stop trying to act like you're the only one ever been through that. So all of a sudden now you just quitting, huh? Because you had moral failure. You got that from white folk. You got that from, from white evangelicals that pushed that in your head. Boy, if every Hebrew Israelite that committed some sin had to stop preaching, we would have nary a preacher in this whole world. <laughs> including Moses, including David, including Solomon, including Jeremiah, including uh, uh, Elijah, including John, including James, including Paul. You're using that for an excuse to quit. And I'm busting you out on it. Yes, on today, it's a Shabbat. We got to get it together, Zion. See, you really want to quit anyway. That's why you want to use this quote-unquote moral failure as your excuse to get off the battlefield. Now, I'm going to tell you something. It's your choice. You do what you want to do. But I'm telling you, get it together. Stop the moral, the, the, the failing morally. And then do what? Start keeping the law, statutes, and commandments and get back on that battlefield. That's what I'm saying. Somebody said, well, the reason why I stopped is because I just got tired. Zion, did you say you got tired? <laughs> tired. <laughs> You just tired. Tired? Like, I'm just tired. Yeah. This might not be for you. <laughs> this might not be for you. You want to quit because you got tired doing it? Yeah, this, this whole work thing that's called work it's probably going to make you tired. <laughs> Most likely, if you're working, anybody in this room know that if you're going to work, work make you tired, would you put a 500000 in this chance? <laughs> because I'm about to get out. If y'all know that working will make you tired, then put a 500000 because people talk about they quit because they tired. What did you think work was going to do? Work makes you tired. Go take a nap. And when you wake up, get back on that battlefield and fight for the kingdom. Fight for Yah. Fight for Israel. Fight for the 12 tribes that have been scattered worldwide. You talk about you tired. Tired? That's your reason to quit? You tired? Tired. That's funny. Every time I finish one of these videos, and I think right now somebody said, Murray, you got almost a thousand videos. Do y'all know when I'm finished? I'm exhausted. I can't even think. I try to leave it all 
on the I try to leave it all. I walk in, I can't even remember my name because my brain is, is, I'm exhausted. Every time I finish, matter of fact, what I end up normally doing, I just go sit down. Be quiet for a while. I don't say, boy, I'm not going to make another video because, whew, I'm tired. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Tired of what, y'all? Man, I didn't know. I, every time I try to read, I get sleepy. <laughs> Maybe you ain't a soldier. Every time I try to study, man, I'm just tired of... Maybe you're not octopus. Maybe I'm not talking to you. If that can't be your excuse for quitting in the kingdom. How about another one? Maybe you thought that somebody else could do it better than you. Now, I want y'all to hear the more, right? Whether someone can do it better than you is not the point. Because most likely, yeah, there's somebody somewhere that can do it better than you. <laughs> and there's somebody out there that can do it better than me. And what's that, what's that mean? So you're going to have a, so you want to have an army, right? And we all soldiers. But you're trying to say if you're not the absolute best fighter there is, you're not going out. So the real reason, so really in your brain, you can have an army with one soldier, the best one, but no one else. So we're not going to have 10,000 warriors on the battlefield, 20,000, 50,000, 100,000, 200,000, a million soldiers. No, just that one that's better than me. Boy, y'all go, these excuses don't mean nothing, do they? See, now that you see the text, you're like, ooh, that's, that is kind of true, all right? Of course it's true. So you talking about you can't sing as good as so-and-so, so you're just not going to sing? No, it's different if you can't sing. Find something else to do. But if you are a singer or you say, I can't teach as good as so-and-so, so he's not going to teach. So what about your teaching level? Now, if you ain't called to teach, don't teach. Now, somebody said, well, I, you know what? I cannot you know, do it. What does that mean to y'all in the kingdom other than an excuse? So Yah says, tell Archippus <laughs> that I said, uh, you need to refocus on your work, on your ministry. And you need to understand I'm the one that gave it to you. And you need to also understand, you need to understand I can take it back if I want to. But you ain't finished. You need to fulfill your task. Maury, you can you back that up? Oh, of course. Calisthenics. Romans 12. Chapter 1. I'm sorry. Romans 12, verse 1. Romans 12, verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of Yah, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, set apart, and acceptable unto Yah, which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you might prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of Yah. For I say, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office. So being many are one body in Hamashiach and every one members of another. Now watch this. Having gifts. Differing though. They're not all the same. They differ according to the grace that is given to us. So this idea of saying, oh, well, I ain't going to do this cut. Listen, everyone has been distributed a gift from Yah. Well, there's prophecy, then prophesy. Preach, Paul. He said, Yah over here is supposed to, now the prophecy is, is, is really unveiling Torah. It's not fortune telling. It's a difference. Or ministry, that's work. He said, let us, wait on, let us do the work. And if you're a teacher, 
You should be teaching. Now, listen, if you're trying to teach and ain't nobody listening because you're not a good teacher, maybe you're not really a teacher. Maybe you just want to teach. Or he that exalted on exhortation. Because, you know, there is a place in the body for exhortating, e exhortation. He that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. In other words, some of y'all been called to be givers. All of us as Israelites were supposed to give to support the work. But I'm saying some of us have a special gift of giving. And if you're watching me, either you are that person or you know somebody like that. There's at least one person in your life that says, boy, you know what? That person right there just seems to have a gift when it comes to giving. It's a gift. of the, That's really a gift in the body to help the body. Watch this. He that ruleth, some people are leaders, diligence. He that showeth mercy, some people just have that. Do it with cheerfulness. Let love be without dissimulation. That means don't let love be fake. Hate which is evil. Hold on to that which is good. And be kindly affectionate one to another with brotherly love and honor, preferring one another, not slothfulness in business, but fervent in spirit, serving Yahuwah. Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, constant in prayer, distributing to the necessity of the saints, giving to hospitality, bless them which persecute you, bless and curse not, rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them that weep, be of the same mind one toward another, mind not to hide things, but condescend to men of low estate, and be not wise in your own conceit. Recompense no man evil for evil. Provide things which are honest in the sight of all men, if it's possible. As much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. First Corinthians chapter 12. I want you to see everybody got something. Everybody is archipus in one way or another. Now, concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. You know that you were Gentiles carried away into these dumb idols. Well, you know at one time you was a Gentile. You know you was painting your kids' faces. You know you was bowing down to white Caesar Bourget's and Christmas trees and Easter bunnies and eggs. Come on, let's stop playing games. Y'all already know you was caught up in some wicked stuff. Even as you were led, wherefore I give to you to understand that no man speaketh by the spirit of Yah, called Hamashiach, curse. Oh, so there's people out here acting like they're speaking by the spirit of Yah, they cursing Yah. I ain't the one, I ain't the, I ain't the spirit, I ain't the, I ain't the, I ain't the angel, I ain't the angel, angel, Africa, Africa, Africa. Going to hell for that. Y'all don't do like the Gentile. That's just some, that's some dirty, nasty, satanic stuff. Don't get caught up in that. I know our people got caught up in it, but you get out of that. Because you mess around and call Hamashiach a curse. And that no man can say that Hamashiach is Yah, but by the Ruach. That's why we declaim he's Yah. It's the Ruach that's telling us the truth. Yah was in Hamashiach reconciling the world to himself. But there are diversities of gifts, but the same Ruach. Really? Yeah, and there's differences of administration, but the same Hamashiach. And there are diversities of operations, but the same Yah, which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the Ruach is given to every man to profit with all. In other words, Yah has given something to everybody so that everybody in the body can prosper and can profit. Do you hear that, Archibus? You talking about you tired of, man, they're getting on my nerves. This ain't no time for that, Zaya. Uh, Hula at Royal Roots. Matter of fact, y'all know that's my wife. Today, make uh, is our anniversary. Hallelujah! And uh, she's doing a research on the gifts of the Ruach 
among the assembly. And she's starting to put it together right now. We've been discussing it back and forth, how we're going to break this thing down and how she's going to be able to present it in a, in a nice, concise package, Hebraically, because we're Hebrew Israelites, not heathens. We're going to be working on it together right now. She's been motivated to get these verses. Y'all look, that's coming. But anyway, watch this. For to one is given by the spirit, the word of wisdom, and to another, the word of knowledge. Same spirit. To another, faith, imunah. By the same spirit. To another, the gifts of healing. What? Yes, by the same Ruach. To another, the working of miracles. Yes. To another, prophecy. Yes. To another, discerning of spirits. Yes. To another, diverse kinds of languages. This ain't no babbling thing. These lying dogs keep pushing on Israel. Ain't the 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 Africa Africa ain't the ain't the Africa Africa is coming we're coming Africa Africa ain't the ain't the ain't the ain't the you're going to hell for that stop it and you Hebrew listening to me let the heathens be heathens they do whatever they want to you learn your book there's a reason for languages because Israel would be scattered to the four corners of the earth. And Israel would be speaking. I'm talking about the Israelites, us, the 12 tribes. We would be speaking another language other than Hebrew. So therefore, someone is going to have to learn the languages that the Hebrews speak. That's a gift. Because if some Hebrew didn't learn English, it would have been difficult for me to understand it. The Hebrew had to learn English so that they could then talk to me and say, now this is Hebrew. This is your original language because all of us are speaking a nasty, bastardized language called English. We need people with the gift of language to help us understand Hebrew. We ain't trying to do no anta, 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 unta, anta, anta, unta. What's wrong with y'all? Stop it. Some of y'all who got the gift of language not studying like you're supposed to so you can get it and help us understand the Bible? It's not cool. And to another interpretation of those languages. But all these work, work is that one and self same Ruach. Dividing to every man severally as he will. It's gifts. And you can't be talking about my gift don't matter. For as the body is one and hath many members, all the members of that body being many are one body in Hamashiach. For by one Ruach, we are all baptized into one body, whether, be, whether we be Yehudin or the Gentiles, the Goyim, whether we be bond or free or have been made, we and have been made to drink into one Rua for the body is not one member but many. If the foot should say, Because I'm not the hand, I'm not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? Boy, is he breaking it down? I just got a message saying, Boy, said my signal is being interrupted. I mean, I'm gonna have to hurry up and get out of here. So what is what is what is Paul saying? He's saying, look, this idea that if you tell you the foot, you're not on the body, don't make no sense. Stop letting people stop letting people tell you what you are, what you ain't, what you can, and what you can't. Don't stop. Uh, get away from that because the the body needs a foot. <laughs> and if therefore the ear shall say, because I'm not the eye, I'm not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? Come on now, it ain't no dang sense. If the whole body were an eye, where would be the hearing? If the whole were the hearing, then where would be the smelling? But Yah has, but now has Yah set in the members, every one of them in the body as it has pleased him. And if they were all one member, were, we, were the body. But now there are many members 
yet but one body. So therefore, this idea of saying I'm not going to do my job, it means it means you still haven't really caught on to the body concept, Zion. And the word to Archippus was, just because you don't understand how important you are to the body, don't mean that Yah does not understand how important you are to the body. Why? Because you don't have to be the eyes, the mouth, the ears to be a very important part of the function of the body. And matter of fact, according to this Bible, the eye can't say to the hand, I don't have no need of thee, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. And nay, much more those members of the body which seem to be more feeble are necessary. <laughs> Topo. Because <laughs> we understand. And those members of the body which we think less honorable, upon these we bestow abundant honor. It's in the Bible. And our uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness. Private parts. They never get... <laughs> he's using a body illustration, y'all. Maury, yes, he's, I'm reading the Bible. How are you talking about that, Archippus? You don't know what time it is? You a soldier. This is not the time to be slipping. This is not the time to be losing focus. This is not the time, man, <clears throat> to be getting discouraged. One more calisthenic. Because I'm drilling this. I'm going to drill this point home because we, we all got to get this. One more biblical calisthenic, and then we get right back in our text. Go to Ephesians chapter 4. Verse 10, <clears throat> he that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens that he might fulfill, that he might fill all things. And he gave some, oh, this ain't your own? No, he gives. He gave some apostles. That word really means a branch or a shoot. It doesn't mean what these Christians say it is. Believe me, they got it all wrong. And some prophets. That's people who can understand Torah. And some evangelists, that's, that's people who go around and teach the Torah. And some pastors and teachers, and those are people who have local congregations that they teach people. Those are some. Why? For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, but it's to the edifying of the body of a Mashiach. Well, how long should we have to do this? Till we all come in the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the son of Yah unto a perfect man unto the measure of the statue of the fullness of Hamashiach so that we don't have to be children no more tossed to and fro like a tumbleweed carried about with every wind of doctrine and slight of men cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive but we are but speaking the truth in love may grow up unto him in all things which is the head even Hamashiach from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth. In other words, we are put together by him right and every joint that he has put together, he is supplying something for the body. According to the effectual working in the measure of every part, make an increase of the body Unto the edifying of itself in what? Love. Now he done threw in something here that I'm getting ready to close with. So what should have been Archippus' main motivation? I mentioned it earlier in the message. Love of Yah and love for Israel. You start losing focus. It's because something is happening between your relationship with Yah and your relationship with Israel. So then you have to be put on blast. You gotta be called out. Pause.
Paul said to him, basically, this is what he said. He said, Archippus, finish what Yah gave you to do. If y'all understand that, put a 900,000. 900,000. Finish what Yah gave you to do. Finish it. Finish. My word to you on this Shabbat. Keep on keeping on. No man put his hand to the plow. Looking back is worthy of fit for the kingdom. Finish. And Paul says to him, finish. That thou fulfill it. Verse 18. The salutation by the hand of me Paul remember my bonds what, what did you say See, Paul was in prison. And so he would dictate his messages. And a scribe would write it. But in order for it to be authentic, I'm closing now. Ah! Uh, in order for it to have his seal of approval, he would say, now, uh, read it back to me. And then uh, they would read it back to him. And he said, that's good. And as he got ready to sign it, no doubt the chain, uh, that was around his wrist. Father went, you know, he's chained. Kind of went clank, 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 clank. He pulled up his wrist and his chain. Clank, 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 clank. Now let me sign this. And by the way, remember these chains. Before you start talking about what you can't do, remember these chains. Before you start talking about I quit and you still run around in freedom, remember these chains. Before you start talking about they, they made a video about me, remember these chains. Before you start talking about they didn't like my song. Remember these chains. Before you start talking about I'm tired. Remember these chains. Before you start talking about it's dark. Remember these chains. Before you start talking about do I need to really learn Hebrew. Remember these chains. This message to you, Archippus. Is not coming from a person who have not suffered. This message is not coming from a person who has not been through it. I'm not talking to you from some ivory tower, man. I'm talking to you from prison. And I'm still on the battlefield. I'm talking to you with my hands shackled. And I'm signing my name on this piece of paper. And this chain, this heavy chain, is scratching the parchment while I'm signing it. So, 
Paul. Prisoner! Of Yahushua Hamashiach. Can I leave you with that, Zion? Can I leave you with remember the chain? Yes. The chains didn't stop his preaching. The chain didn't stop his teaching. The chains didn't stop his exhortation. The chains didn't make him want to quit. And here he is in prison, locked up and chained while Archippus is at the house talking about he quit. Woo! Remember, man, my bones. And uh, not only to remember that, uh, in another book, Paul said, and if you ever really get tired, remember the sufferings of our anointed one, Yehoshua Hamashiach. For you do know that nobody suffered like he suffered. Nobody was lied on like he was lied on. Nobody was betrayed like he was betrayed. Nobody was misunderstood like he was misunderstood. Nobody went through a kangaroo court like he went through a kangaroo court. Nobody prayed in the garden of Gethsemane like he prayed until sweat like great drops of blood ran down the precious brow of our king. Nobody had his closest friends Flee and forsake him like our king. Nobody stood in front of Caiaphas and Adonis and declared you said and then have to be beaten there. Un Don't forget that he was wounded for our transgressions. Ah, and he was bruised. For our iniquity, the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And the next time you think about quitting and understand something, it was by his stripes. For they whipped him all night long. And you talk about you want to quit. He carried a crossbeam up Golgotha where they then riveted his hands and nailed his feet. And you talking about you ready to quit. Uh, hung him between two thieves. Mocked him. Scourged him. When he asked for something to drink, instead of water, they put vinegar and touch the precious lips of our king. And you talk about how huh, I'm gonna quit. You have no idea. He hung there for you. He stayed there for you. Hung, bled, and died for you. He stayed the course he fulfilled his task for you. He was faithful to Abaya unto death. 
Now my shawl done got happy. I got to quit because I started hollering and y'all won't understand that part. <laughs> but oh, death couldn't kill him. And the grave couldn't hold him. Abaya, by his mercy. And that's the last word in this text. If you read it, he says, and his grace. Yes, remember the grace. Man, boy, what's the grace? The grace represents being invited into the house. It's the wall of separation. Archippus, listen, don't ever forget. I know you get tired, but don't forget. We're in the house, man. Archippus, I know you are getting tired, but man, we in the house. I know they talking about you, Archippus, but we in the house. <laughs> Archippus, I know, man, your focus is getting off because of this and that, but we in the house, man. We in the house. We in the house. We in the house. So whenever you start getting tired and lonely or you ever start going through it, just keep thinking, we in the house, though, but we in the house with y'all. But we're in the house of the hopeful. We're in the house. We're part of his army. We're in the house. We're Israel. We're the redeemed. We are the host. We're in the house. He's our father. We're his children. He is our shepherd. We are his sheep. Archibus, remember this grace. That's what the word grace means. We're in the house. I got to go, Zaya. <laughs> but be encouraged. Whenever you start getting weak, whenever you start slipping, one, know that y'all knows. And know this. He's going to tell you, go back to work. Why? You in the house? Am I in? You in the house. Uh, I told you death couldn't hold Messiah. The power of resurrection. The power of the Ruach. He rose again with all power in his hand. You are in that house. <laughs> where the power of resurrection resides. You're in that house where healing resides. You're in that house where ah uh, knowledge is imparted. You're in the house where the benefits of the kingdom are first given to you. You in the house, in the house, yes, where the water flows freely. You in the house where the bread of life is served every day. You in the house, man. <laughs> you are in the house. I might be in prison and the shackles may be on my wrist. But I'm in the house. They may talk about me. Put my name in the street. But I'm in the house. <laughs> ah, I'm in the house. That's why I'm going to give you the glory. Praise, honor. It's a word to Occupus. Amen. We in the house. This ain't no time for giving up. This ain't no time for throwing in the towel. This ain't no time for being discouraged. The master of the house. He about to come back and get up. But Mare, what about COVID? Don't worry about it. You already in the house. The earthquakes and tornadoes, yeah, but you in the house. Though. But you know, man, the money getting tight, but we in the house. I don't know if I can make it through tomorrow. Don't worry, we in the house. Woo! That's what he told him. 
That was the very last thing he said. Grace be with you. Amen. In other words, the last thing he said was, we're in the house. So I am I got to go love you so much. Turn our about for you. Pray you be encouraged. That word to Archibus is a word to us today. Stay true. Don't let go. Stay on the battlefield. Keep doing the work. It's almost over. A king is coming. Y'all put a million in this. Come on, y'all know how we do it. I got to go. Put a one million in the chat. If I by y'all blessed you, put a million. Put a million in here. Let the whole world know. We just got encouraged on this Shabbat as we start off the Gregorian 21. We ain't worried about that. Why? We in the house. Woo, the one million from all over the world is in here. Yes! Let's put Brianna on one more game as we get out of here. Where y'all from? Let's see. Somebody say, one million in the house. Yeah. Yeah. We in the house. St. Louis, Maryland, Chicago. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Cleveland, Ohio. Shalom, Aki. I don't know what the problem is. Tennessee. Time and time and time again. Yes, Trinidad and Tobago. One million. Alabama. Texas and Louisiana and Illinois and Bluefield and woo, Palestine to all you at the Holy Land. Hallelujah for you. Stay strong. Won't be long. We're going home. Woo, New Orleans, Savannah, Georgia, Phoenix, Arizona, Florida, Georgia, Virginia, Louisiana, Illinois, the Bahamas. Y'all be careful out there. Chicago, Mercer, Tennessee, North Carolina, Texas. Virginia is working out for our good, Zion. Woo, Ohio in the house, Barbados. Trying to get down there one day. Hallelujah. Lexington, Kansas City in the house. Don't forget to support the work of the art as we continue to support you, Zion. To my heart, I surrender. Holding up my cross, won't forget who you send me. My big brother, New York, Concord, the UK, Cleveland, Ohio. If it ain't big money, but it's dollar bills. Oh, you say I saw one love, one love to you too. Oh, yes, Moray loves you. Zion. And the devil used a lie, and I can't believe you tried. Oh, you told me that it's working out for my good. You told me that it's South Carolina. Glad to have you. Oh, Zeke, I didn't know you was in the house. Yeah, man, glad to have you, Zeke. Trika and Z, thank you so much for being in the room. Hallelujah. One love, one love. <laughs> You told me that it's working out for my good. 
One love, one love. Woo! Zion, we got to go. We gonna go out giving our by y'all praise for blessing us and allowing us this opportunity to be together. Love y'all. Thank you.